Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this disappointing video, I'm going to tell you results of the detailed testing of Machinist X99Z version 102 motherboard and why it took me so long to produce this video. First of all, let's go through the motherboard specification. The motherboard is designed for the Intel LGA 2011 version 3 socket. It supports Intel Core i7 and Intel Xeon E5 version 3 version 4 series processors. There are four DDR4 slots which work in quad-channel configuration. Regular desktop DDR4 as well as server registered ECC RAM is supported. On the back side we have four USB 3 ports, four USB 2 ports, LAN port and 5.1 audio. On the motherboard itself there are six SATA 3 ports, two fan headers, one of which is 4 pin, another one is 3 pin, one PCI Express x 16 slot and one PCI Express times one slot. There are also two M.2 slots for SSDs. One is marked as PCI Express 3.0 times 4 and other one is marked as M.2 SATA SSD. In my regular videos I would go to the test results and provide list of the tested processors and tested RAM configuration. Unfortunately, Machinist X99Z has died in my hands. I don't know what exactly has caused the problem, but right now the motherboard is dead. I have tested multiple graphics cards, I have tested multiple processors, multiple RAM configurations, I have tried to clear CMOS, I have tried to keep the motherboard without battery for a very long time. It does not work. When I try to start the motherboard, the fans are spinning, but nothing is shown up on the screen, and the keyboard does not show any signs of life, as well as the mouse is not indicating any lighting LEDs. I have tried to reach out to the seller in the search for some help, and after some conversation the seller just refunded me the money I spent to buy the motherboard instead of helping me to revive the motherboard. Thus, I'm gonna tell you only about these features that I was able to test on this motherboard before it died, and I'm going to tell you what exactly I did which led for this motherboard to be completely dead. Okay, let's briefly go through the features and settings of the motherboard that I was actually able to test, and after that I will tell you a bit more what I did to make the motherboard die. Windows sleep mode, Linux support, boot from NVMe drive, RAM timings and VRAM thermal performance I did not have a chance to test before the motherboard died. Turbo boost is Turbo Boost Unlock is not possible on this motherboard because the BIOS chip is locked. FPT tool is refusing to read or write the BIOS chip and it does not matter if I'm using Windows or DOS version of the tool. AfoDOS is reporting that the BIOS was written but in reality nothing changes and the BIOS chip is still containing the previous version of the BIOS. Unfortunately, my CH341A USB BIOS programmer is not powerful enough to power up this motherboard and be able to read and write the chip on the motherboard. Thus, I have to desolder the BIOS chip from the motherboard in order to be able to flush BIOS with unlocked Turbo Boost. I do not have any tools for desoldering BIOS and soldering it back, that's why I'm not going to proceed with this. Here is some more test features that I was able to test on this motherboard before it died. As I said, I have tested Xeon E5 2640V3 and Core i7 6800K. Both of the CPUs worked fine and Turbo Boost on both of the CPUs worked correctly. With Intel Core i7 6800K I have tested the following RAM sticks. Two sticks 8GB each DDR4-2133 and four sticks 8GB each DDR4-3200. Unfortunately, my video capture card was busy with another project, that's why I did not have any screen captures or video recordings for these checks. With the Xeon E5 2640V3, I have tested 4 sticks 8GB each DDR4-3200 and 4 sticks 8GB each DDR4-2400 CL17 ECC registered RAM. So I can say for sure that this motherboard supports DDR4 desktop RAM and DDR4 registered ECC RAM. Anything else I cannot say for sure because I didn't have a chance to test. USB 3 ports do work and they work correctly. I ran my typical test with Crystal Disk Mark and Samsung T5 external SSD drive, no issues were detected. 
SATA 3 ports all work and all are SATA 3. 4 pin fan header works and fan speed is adjustable according to the CPU temperature. 3 pin fan header I didn't have a chance to check. PCI Express x16 slot also works correct. M.2 PCI Express 3.0x4 slot also is working correctly. I tested installing NVMe SSD drive there, the speed was correct and the PCI Express version was also correct. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to test the second M.2 slot. Thus, I cannot say if it's really M.2 SATA port or it's M.2 SSD port, which is just mislabeled. So, here is what I did to kill this motherboard. First of all, I had 4 sticks of RAM, I had my i7-6800K installed into the motherboard, and I was using GTX 1050 Ti as the graphics card. I don't think any of this makes any difference, but I'm providing all the details that I have. Then I went to the BIOS, I have restored default settings, and then I tried to apply an overclocking settings for this CPU. Unfortunately, I do not have recording for this particular action on this particular motherboard. But I can provide recording from another motherboard, in this particular case it's Huanan Zhi, which is also having overclocking options. And I have applied this exact same settings on Machinist X99Z version 102 motherboard with my i7-6800K processor. After that I have saved settings, tried to reboot my computer, and Machinist X99Z never went back online. Thus, I can say that I have killed my motherboard by trying to enable some overclocking options. Maybe there is something wrong with the voltage regulations on the motherboard, maybe there are some kind of safety features, I honestly have no idea what's going on there, but the motherboard is simply not working, and the seller where I bought the motherboard was not able to provide any meaningful help, Instead, he decided to just refund me the money I spent for the motherboard and forget about this story. In the conclusion, I can say that this is yet another motherboard, which is a big disappointment. Overall, I really like the layout of the motherboard. I really like that it actually has four RAM slots and it's quad channel memory. And I like that it has two M.2 slots and not three PCI Express X1 slots. I like that they have finally replaced PS2 ports to two USB 2 ports on the back side. Everything indicates to be like a very decent motherboard. Unfortunately, it just died. And unfortunately, with my particular sample, it's not possible to implement Turbo Boost Unlock. Right now, the motherboard is being sold for something like 60 to 75 euros. Whether to buy it or not buy it, that's totally up to you. My experience with this motherboard is absolutely negative and I cannot recommend it for anyone. Regarding the alternatives, you can take a look at Huanan Zhi X99-8M, a small form factor motherboard. If you are looking for something bigger, take a look at Huanan Zhi X99-TF. And I'm yet to test Huanan Zhi X99-F8. Huanan Zhi X99 F8 is supposed to be exactly the same motherboard as Huanan Zhi X99 TF, with the one difference. F8 version is having 8 slots for DDR4 RAM, while TF having 4 slots for DDR4 RAM and 4 slots for DDR3 RAM. Unfortunately, that's all I can say about Machinist X99Z. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, goodbye.